Just a heads up, because I missed a couple of weeks for the ViewSonic Play of the Week, I'm actually going to be including them in this video here, as well as picking the winner for July. So if you want to see if you were entered to win, or if you actually won the XG240R, stay till the end of the video. Hey everyone, Mtashed here, and I'm returning to my old favorite exotic, the Transverse of Steps. While doing a solo flawless dungeon run, I equipped these for the first time in a long time, and man did I miss them. Now, with changes to other exotics in the last couple of years, this exotic has actually almost gained value. This thing was top tier before, but I honestly think this is one of the best exotics in the game, and I have to commend this because of the amount of value it brings. Now, if you can get a good roll on this bad boy, you're going to be very happy. But even if you have a bad roll, I think this is one of those exotics that you should try out if you haven't in a long time or ever. There are hundreds of exotics in the game, but Transverse of Steps is godly. So let's get into it. This increases your sprint speed, one of the only exotics in the game that does that. Now, this is helpful in PvP. It's helpful in PvE. If you can get around the map faster, that's always a win, but this gives you survivability. Increased sprint allows you to get behind cover faster. It allows you to be more aggressive with your super and chase people down. And if someone is chasing you with their super, you actually have a good chance of getting away. It's not an insane increase to your sprint speed, but it's enough to matter. And that's what's exciting. Now, it also improves your slide distance because your momentum is moving forward at a faster rate, kind of like the Dune Marchers. So this is an overall boost to your mobility, and that alone is valuable. It's also worth noting that the sprint speed does impact your velocity, so if you're doing stuff like Icarus Dash skating on PC, it will give you more forward momentum and allow you to do things like this where you can almost glide backwards away from targets. It also means that if you're moving in your super, your dashes will be slightly faster, and your overall sprinting and movement will be faster, and you're going to be able to catch or run away from anyone you see. Something that I definitely love. Now, the next perk is pretty interesting. After a short time sprinting, your currently equipped weapon is automatically reloaded. This is super valuable if you're sprinting around with any weapon, or if you have something that's got a relatively slow reload speed like Xenophage, Getting that reload off and being mobile while doing it is super good. Now, back in the day, I didn't value it as much in PvE because we had stuff like the Luna Faction boots. You could throw down a well, it would automatically reload your weapons, you could swap between them for free, and this was the obvious choice if you wanted fast, deadly reloads. Now, these still work, and while you're stationary in a rift, you can get that reload speed. But... There's something to say about the mobility that Transverse of Steps adds, and I want to give you an example from the dungeon the other day. In the final boss room for the dungeon, there are a lot of things trying to kill you. There are boss enemies in each corner, there are knights throwing fire, there are other adds spawning in, and being mobile was very important. After I got used to running around and reloading with the mountaintop, I realized, damn, I never have to stand still. And that mobility saves lives. That mobility makes it very difficult to die in this game. I think that a lot of the AI is pretty useless when you're moving. And so sprinting around, getting a quick mountaintop shot off, and then continuing to sprint makes you like this immune gamer that doesn't have to worry too much about incoming damage. In most cases, you can get a shot off, sprint around behind cover into safety, and then you can pop out again with your weapon reloaded. It's only a few seconds before your gun is reloaded, and in many cases, like the Xenophage or even the Mountaintop, this sprinting to reload is half the time in some cases of these weapons. And so if you're looking at how effective it is for overall DPS, that's great. But the survivability factor is the main thing here that I'm excited about. Yes, I can sprint around and that is the only way I reload. It works. It's awesome but the added benefit of making it almost impossible for these targets to hit you by running out of area of effect damage like fire, getting behind cover from that acolyte eye that's trying to smash you with arc damage, I'm telling you guys, transversive steps are nuts. 
in PvP, this probably has even more value. And I think that this little text before a Rumble game kind of exemplifies that. The enemy is all around you. We have a radar in this game that's pretty damn forgiving, and that gives us opportunities to make decisions. That means that we know a target is somewhere within like, what, 25, 30 meters of us at all times. After a fight, a quick glance at the radar gives you an opportunity to run, either away from the target or directly to them. It allows you to play hyper-aggressive and know that as soon as you see that target, you're most likely going to be reloaded again without actually having to press the button. This fast play, I honestly think, is one of the best ways to improve because you're constantly pushing forward and getting into gunfights. This works on console, it works on PC, but I think it is an invaluable little tool if you want to play a little bit faster and more aggressive, especially if you're doing something like shotgunning. But what if you want to play safe? Well, then it's even better. Because if you are running away and you're trying to escape, but you can't, at least you're going to have a reloaded weapon. I can't count the amount of times that I've been in an engagement, I fight someone, and someone else is whipping around the corner. A lot of these maps are very small, but if you take an opportunity to run and get behind cover, you might buy yourself enough time to get your HP back. But in that case, you might not have enough time to reload before the next fight. With transverse of steps, you have the opportunity to do both. You have the opportunity to not only get away and get your health back and be ready for the fight, but also to have that weapon ready to go. Another important thing is special ammo. Now, as you get kills around the map, you're going to find special ammo all the time. And you're also going to need to reload that ammo all the time. It's so much nicer being able to just quickly swap to your shotgun and have it fully reloaded for just a couple seconds of work than having to stop, plant yourself, and fully reload it bullet by bullet by bullet. This clip is pretty much perfection. After sprinting, I get the reload and I'm at low health. I try to survive, but I'm getting pushed from multiple angles. The speed I generate with transversive steps most likely allows me to get out of this, even though there are multiple people around me. I know that this one is a little bit BS, but almost all of that play wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been ready to fight if I didn't have that speed, if I didn't have those reloads. I just would have died. Now, after all of this footage and after what I've said, you still aren't convinced. There are some other exotics that might be more your playstyle. I would say that this is an exotic that you benefit from playing very fast. And if you don't like to do that, you like to be more planted and safe, maybe transverse of steps isn't for you. But if you kind of like to run around like a chicken with your head cut off and just slay out and do goofy stuff, this one is pretty much uncontested for that fun factor. You're faster, you can reload things like mountaintop and sprint around the map like a jerk, you can shotgun, you can do PvE stuff and have a lot of fun with that and, and even kind of just sprint through strikes. I love this exotic. It's one of my favorites in the game on all classes, and I think that you should give it a try. Now, let's end off the video with a bang and check out the play of the week from last week with Jossa Hosen. Now, this one was dunktastic. Let's take a peek. Josh is messing around with Ruinous Effigy. After getting the first kill, a transmutation orb is there tempting him, teasing him because he knows if he picks this bad boy up, he's getting multi. He blinks in towards B, blinks in on top of the enemy, and slams down for the easy triple, almost quad piece. Beautiful play. However, this next play from Ducky not only was jaw dropping, it's going to be the winner of the first XG240R July competition for View Sonic Play of the Week. Let's take a peek, baby! Now, I had to mute it because he's using copyright music in the background, and you might think that this is the play, but it's actually not. Even though this guy's the sickest sniper since KJ Hovey himself, this is just the beginning. After getting some of the crispest comboed snipes I've ever seen, he picks up his linear fusion rifle. Now, normally, I wouldn't be too hype, but with the stacking of Rampage, he starts body shotting people, getting the first four kills, then pops a Goldie for not only a seventh column, but a ninth column. He added another two columns. Look at this guy. He's a murder machine. And honestly, if he had those snipers reloaded, he probably could have got some more. This guy's either an aimbot or the best player I've ever seen. 
Ducky, congratulations on winning the View Sonic Play of the Week and your brand new XG240R. I will be emailing you. Thank you so much for entering, and make sure to send in your clips to viewsonicplays at gmail.com if you want to enter in for August.